So we get clean kitchen, we can toggle that, right? And we can remove it. But we always have to refresh. And that's now where Angular Query comes in. So Angular Query originates from the 10 stack, as we already saw in the at the beginning of the stream. So the 10 stack is actually something that comes from React. But there's also a Angular adapter for this. 10 stack Angular Query, yeah. So we are going to install Engineed Query. So let's go ahead, let's shut down our front end and let's say we install Engineed Query. So inside our to-do service, so we will go ahead and do like private query client and checked, not like this, query client, I think that's the one. Nope, the method is called in checked query client. So return query, um, we actually, we get to do's. So now basically we say the query key is to do's. So that's now the key of the cache. And then what you can say, query function get to do array. And inside here, we have our backend URL. So we still go like dollar backend URL slash to do's, right? So that's now our query. Um, this is a different result. So this is a, oh my God. Result of query observe result to do error. So component usage. So now we have a result property, right? So to do so the result async, but I want to have a signal. Yes, nice component usage signal. Let me also bump that here a bit. So now uh, to get a signal, use the result property. So we can say loading. Basically, that's the cool thing. We have a loading spinner now. So to do service, this is the result. So inside our to do's component, we now get those to do's. And that would be, um, we don't have to convert this to a signal because this is just a query observer result. And now what we can say here is add if to do's dot loading. Uh, it's dot result, sorry. It's dot result. We have to do that. Otherwise we don't get a signal dot result. So now we can do to do's dot loading is loading. Right, then we can do to do's dot data. Um, we still need to track, and if it's an error, we can have error. This is this is pretty neat. I have to say, ng neat. Cool, so now let's go again to our application. Let's add to do. So now if we load that, we can see that we get our to do's and that's now Angular query. I think they also have some pretty cool dev tools which can show us um, how, how stuff looks like in the query cache. There is somewhere dev tools, utils. No, type utils is fetching dev tools. So we just provide query tools with some options. Provide query dev tools. So I, I would say we go to the app config and we go to our app config and we say provide. Query, how was it called? Ah, we need to install Query Dev Tools.
minus v. This is a development tool. It's, it's pretty cool because you get like this, this icon somewhere here at the bottom. Somewhere here, I think you get this 10 stack icon or this query icon. I don't know how it's like a flower. It looks almost like a flower. And then you can basically see the dev tools, like which um, things are cached and so on. But we will see it now. Provide query dev tools. Are we still running? Nope. Now is okay. It's not a flower. It's like this, but you can see that we now have to do's and we can then see basically the options, um, the query, the query hash, and you can also invalidate the cache, refetch, reset, remove, and all, do all those things. And somewhere you can also see stale. Um, can we also see the data data here? That's the to do, right? Title add to do false. You could toggle that. Um, you can do different things here. So that's pretty cool. But now we will basically, whenever we still, um, whenever we add a to do, so let's add foo, nothing happens. So now we basically at this point have to invalidate the cache. So we think completely different about the state because with NGRX you think like you have a server state and you have a copy of that state on your client, which is the client state, but you kind of duplicate the state. With Angular Query, you think of the, of the client state as a cache. It's just a cache and you invalidate that cache. And if it's invalidate, you refetch. So let's go ahead and do... So we did inject query component usage. Typing query options, yeah, yeah. Infinite query, we also did a stream with that already. Add to do, yes. So now we add a to do and we have to use inject mutation. Private mutation is equal to inject mutation. Now add to do return this dot mutation. Um, mutation function takes in a title, it post title and done false. I mean the done false we could actually also handle on the server side. But yeah, and then we continue because on add to do title ref to value. Okay, that's good. So now we probably have to do this inside our to do's component. We get the to do service and we say we have a add to do. So then we call this. Now we have a naming clash um, on add to do. So then let's also do here a on. I think I, that's a good idea. So let's go to our to do's component. And now toggle um, that was here on add to do. So on add to do is equal to this dot to do service dot add to do so we get that and now inside here what we will do is we would call on this dot add to do dot mutate like that now let's see what happens we have foo we have bar and nothing and do we get an error do we get a network request Nope. Because what is going to happen here, like what I would expect is bar add to do 
And now if you would say like, um, we have our to do's cache and we say invalidate, then we have the to do's here. We have the bar. Let me see again. So we add pass. And now we add a to do. So we have the to do's. We add a to do. We don't have pass here. But once we invalidate, we get it because then it recalls. I think like, how does he know which cache he's mutating? I don't know how I s haven't seen that. But yeah, of course, like somewhere, basically that's what we try to do here. Somewhere you have to say like invalidate the queries. And now that's also why you need a query client. Bring out trash. Here we go. And that's cool, right? Imagine we would do that without the query. So what we would need to do is somehow, this sucks. So we would need to do this to do service dot add to do. Then we would need to subscribe it. Subscribe, get the to do out, and then somehow push it to the to do's we have. So we would need to introduce some internal state for to do's and push that to do in there. Plus we would need to handle the subscription. So with uh, take until destroy so that we don't introduce memory leaks. Or if we want to have that as a stream, we need a subject where we push that in and then we merge and we basically have to clone the state. And with Angular query, we don't have to do that. We have a cache and we just say, well, do that, invalidate the cache and we are done. I basically now want to have this. So I would say we do a the same for toggle to do and probably would then make sense to expo export some common components this dot put slash dollar id then we get the id here So something like that. So then we do the same for the deletion, delish, delete. On success, invalidate queries, um, delete, yeah. And now we can see how cool this whole thing is. Delete to do, to do item component. Add to do's component. So we would have add to do, toggle to do, toggle to do. So those we call on. Also this one we call um, on toggle to do. This dot toggle to do dot mutate dot mutate. All right and. Then inside our to do's component, add to do, add to do, on toggle to do, on delete to do. Nice. See? Completely working. And here we even have the dev tools with everything in there. It's, it's pretty cool, I have to say. That's basically it. And that's Angular Query which is pretty cool.